which gives it an 85% certified fresh tomato meter with a total count of 289 verified reviews, saying here, thrillingly unrestrained yet solidly crafted, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood tempers Tarantino's provocative impulses with the clarity of a mature filmmaker's vision. And I believe mature is the right word to use here predominantly because of the fact this is his ninth movie. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How are you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is 3 Buck Theater, and welcome to The Aftermath, which is a video series where I occasionally take a look at new releases and uh, kind of uh, just give an overview of their opening weekend, how things turned out for them, whether it was a hit or it was a failure. And I think that uh, this one, this one, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is going to be definitely a win for Quentin Tarantino. As we can see here on this beautiful one sheet, it's the ninth film from Tarantino, one that he says is his penultimate. He's only going to do one more, which I personally think is, a, uh, is, is not a real thing. To be honest with you, I think he's going to keep I think he's going to keep making movies. I think uh, it's just a marketing gimmick, but uh, that's that's my take. Your take could be entirely different, but I thought we would dive in to just how good this movie was. And so let's let's just start off by looking at the top 10. How did it fare in the opening weekend? And that is, well, quite frankly, um, pretty decent. We can see here that on the IMDb top 10 chart, it's coming in at number two with forty point four million dollars right underneath The Lion King, which has seventy five point five million on its second weekend which is pretty damn nuts actually but uh, once upon a time in hollywood an r-rated movie in the, the the dog days of summer pulling in that kind of cash is not very bad at all coming over here to cinema score we can see that audiences liked it giving it a b uh, this is Tarantino. You would assume people going to see a Tarantino film would probably give it an A, but th this movie's doing really well. So he's bringing in more people that are probably not entirely familiar with his work, and that could be leading to a bit of the cinema score, although it could also be some of the reviews themselves, which we will talk about here in a second. Jumping over to Metacritic, we can see that the Metacritic score is an 85, giving it a must-see award based on 58 critics. Uh, users also seem to like it on on the site. I would show more from it, but let's be fair, Metacritic is pretty poorly designed and hard to decipher. So unfortunately, we got to rely basically on, well, Rotten Tomatoes, which gives it an 85% certified fresh tomato meter with a total count of 289 verified reviews, saying here, thrillingly unrestrained yet solidly crafted, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood tempers Tarantino's provocative impulses with the clarity of a mature filmmaker's vision. And I believe mature is the right word to use here predominantly because of the fact this is his ninth movie. And he has done uh, this uh, very, for a very, very, very long time. And at this point, Tarantino knows exactly what he is doing. So, Let's take a look here at what the critics are saying. Rex Reed giving it a rotten review. Kind of surprising uh, with this caption here saying, frankly, I find the entire experience baffling and any attempt to laugh off the Manson murders as sitcom fodder embarrassing. That was always going to be a tough one, in my, in my opinion. The brutality of Sharon Tate's murder at the hands of the Manson family, given the fact she was pregnant, is one of those things where... Yeah, if it's not handled with like the best kind of sensibilities, it's going to be heavily, heavily criticized. Uh, ben Sachs from the Chicago Reader here says, though Tarantino mixes fiction and historical fact cleverly and confidently, I'm not sure what he wanted to achieve with this mix this time, and I'm not sure if he knew either. Uh, one of the things I've heard, one of the complaints I've heard is that there's not much of a story here. Again, it's kind of a fly on the wall day in the life of, which is something that Tarantino is known for doing, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, ben Lowry from CNN gives it a fresh review saying, for those well-versed with the writer-director's work, it's a credible and intriguing addition to his filmography, yet at two hours and 41 minutes, it also feels too leisurely connecting its threads. That's a long movie. That That is Avengers Endgame uh, level of length, although about 19 minutes shorter. And finally here, Joe Morgenstern from Wall Street Journal says, as one might expect from Mr. Tarantino's previous films, his new one is violent as well as tender plus terrifically funny, yet this virtuoso piece of storytelling also offers intricate instruction on the pervasive of violence in popular culture, which is 
pretty fascinating if you uh, if you look at the idea there that Tarantino uh, does love to offer up a lot of violence in regards to good storytelling, and that's how he kind of mixes it all together. I think at this point, nine movies in, you come to expect that from him, and if it's not done in the right way, um, people are going to notice it. Joe here clearly noticed it, and it clearly worked for him. But what about uh, what about the audience? What is the audience saying here? Well, uh, we have KJP who's a super reviewer, and keep in mind, just to be fair, this comes from Rotten Tomatoes in order to be perceived as a super reviewer you must have purchased your tickets via fandango.com right now until they open it up so keep that in mind he gives it four and a half stars saying well quentin tarantino is at it again and has now graced his fans with his ninth directorial effort uh if you're not including death proof well we don't really like the include death proof here uh steve l giving it four stars saying leaving the ninth feature film of every turn of the century junior high school boys favorite director quentin tarantino uh i felt as i did watching the last several films uh <laughs> okay so you can see he liked it he had four stars here these are just summarizations uh glenn g with four stars uh saying thanks for sharing um and then also nate z here gave it four stars um, and so, yeah, I mean, you could tell these are people who genuinely, genuinely enjoyed, uh, the work. Unfortunately, their, their little snippets are, are not as concise as the critics, but that's because the critics are able to put their snippets directly. But we can see that these scores are pretty high, given the fact that it does have a 75% uh, positive rating on this, on the website right now. But here's the kicker. When it comes to Tarantino's other films, his other directorial entries uh, over the span of the last 25 years, uh, this is his biggest opening yet with $40 million. And that is a big thing, considering the fact that this movie was originally projected to only gross about $30 million, and it had a 90 to $96 million budget. So is the likelihood to turn a profit for Sony Pictures uh, in, in the end days of summer? Possibly. In fact, I would argue that, yeah, it probably will go ahead and pull out uh, a fair amount of money for the um, for the company. I don't I don't see why it won't. But its budget may be the big thing that holds it back in other territories. I mean, the the average you know rule of thumb is that a movie has to gross uh, you know three times its production budget in order to turn a profit. Is this going to be a three hundred million dollar film worldwide? Who knows? Time will time will have to tell on it. Um, but then again, you've also got the home video market, which Tarantino does tend to do very well there. And with the success of the uh, Hateful Eight miniseries cut for Netflix, who knows? This movie could find itself getting that same exact treatment because we all know that Tarantino loves to overshoot his movies and then whittle them down. Uh, however, ever since the passing of Sally Menke um, a couple years ago, his, his films haven't had the same editorial panache that they had previously had, and that is unfortunate. But hey, what do you guys think about this? Let me know down in the comments below. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Uh, if you've seen the movie, I haven't seen it yet, so my review's not up, but I just wanted to do a look at the overview of how it performed on opening weekend. And uh, if you guys want to also jump in on the conversation, feel free to head on over to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash three buck theater and check out their group over there. I'm trying to build that up right now. And then at the same time, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please toss it a like if you enjoyed it. Let's try to get to 200 likes. I think we can do it. I believe in you. And I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.